In this video, we're going to talk about the idea of electrical resistance. And what we're wondering is, does a large electric potential difference always result in a large flow rate? What factors determine how much flow rate you get for a certain potential difference? Well, to this point, we've talked about two types of materials. We've talked about conductors and insulators. And we said that conductors are materials that allow charge flow easily. And insulators are materials through which it's very difficult to get charges to flow. Uh, most materials certainly fall somewhere in between those two. In fact, there's a whole class of materials called semiconductors, which are sometimes conductors and sometimes insulators. That's what computer chips are called. Uh, we would say that all materials exhibit some degree of resistance. Well, what do resistors resist? When we talk about resistance, what's being resisted? And we would say resistors resist the flow of electric charge. Uh, all light bulbs that we've worked with, the filaments, are resistors. They resist the flow of electric charge. A uh, resistor that allows charge to move through it easily, we would say has a low resistance and a piece of material that hinders the flow of charge more strongly, we would say, well, that has a high resistance. Resistance is something that we actually measure, something that we actually calculate, and we'll do that in just a moment. Electrical resistance is measured in terms of a unit that is called an ohm. And this is the symbol we use in formulas for it. It's a Greek letter omega. Now if we think about what is it about materials that would make it resist charge flow, one thing would be how long the material is. The longer it would be, the more it would resist charge flow. Uh, the thickness or the cross-sectional area of it, the bigger or the thicker that the wire is, the less resistance it would have because it's easier for charges to get through a big thick piece of metal than a very tiny thin one. And of course the material itself, some materials are easy for charges to get through and some are more difficult. So we have how long it is, how thick it is, and what it's made out of. Now when we were doing our lab activity we also inspected directly round bulb and long bulb filaments. We noticed that long bulbs uh, had a very kind of thin, tiny filament, and a round bulb filament was much thicker. So it would be easier for charges to get through a round bulb filament than it would through a long bulb filament. So we'd say that the round bulb has a lower resistance. In other words, it's easy for charges to get through. A long bulb has a higher resistance because the round bulb filament the area of it was large, so it was easy to get through. The long bulb filament was very thin, so it was difficult for it to get through. So now we're ready to talk about how exactly you would calculate the resistance of a material in ohms. And what we're going to do is use this formula to calculate resistance. So we already said what affects the material's resistance is how thick the wire is, how long the wire is, and what its material is. So all three of those factors are in this formula. The material is represented by putting a constant in, and this is the Greek letter rho that represents the constant, and that material is represented by its resistivity, and we'll talk about that more in just a moment. L is the length of the resistor, and that's in the numerator because the longer the material is, the more resistance you have. And A is the cross-sectional area of the material. And that's in the denominator because the larger the cross-sectional area is, in other words, the wider or thicker the wire is, the lower the resistance is. In this formula, the effect of the material on the resistance is represented by this constant called the resistivity, which is represented by the Greek letter rho. Now on our reference tables we get different these six materials 
And here's the number. And notice they're very tiny numbers, 10 to the negative 8 in units of ohms times meters. And so what I do in a given problem, like we'll do in a moment, is I have to know what the material is. And then I look up what the resistivity for that material is, and I substitute that number right in here where the resistivity letter rho is written. Okay, just to recap here, before we try a problem, uh, the resistance is measured in ohms. The resistance is a measurement of how difficult it is for charges to get through here. And there are three things that uh, affect how hard it is to get through. And one is what the material is measured by the resistivity rho. Notice the different materials can make it harder or easier to get through the tube down there. How long the wire is could make it harder or easier to get through the tube. And the area, or what we, we might call the thickness of the wire. Now what we mean by area is kind of the area of this end of the tube, which is a circle, and the area of a circle is pi r squared. So as I make the area small, it's hard to get through. As I make the area big, it's easy to get through. All right, well, here's our problem. What is the resistance of one meter of nichrome wire whose diameter is 0.04318 meters? What is the resistance of a meter of nichrome wire whose diameter is 0.04318 centimeters. All right, well, first of all, I'm going to just write down that I need all of the dimensions. I need them everything to be in meters, and that's in centimeters. So the question is, what is 0.04318 centimeters in meters? And the answer to that is 0. 0.0004318 meters. In other words, this number divided by 100. So this is actual real wire. We're doing a problem with uh, real wiring. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, Brittany Meser. Meanwhile, back at our problem, we're trying to figure out the resistance of this wire and the formula that we're going to use is the one we've just learned, which is that resistance is equal to resistivity times the length of the wire divided by the area of the wire. So if we've learned that the diameter of the wire is 0.04318 centimeters, we converted that to meters, the area of the wire is kind of the area of the end of the wire, which as we saw before, is the area of a circle which is pi r squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure this area out. The length of the wire is one meter, and the resistivity of the wire, I have to look up what nichrome is. So to calculate the area of the wire, I multiply pi times r squared. Now, the radius is half of the diameter. So I take the diameter, divide it by 2, that's what that is, and then pi times that radius squared, and that is the area of the end of the wire. So I have the area, it's this, I have the length, it's 1 meter, now all I need is what is the resistivity of nichrome. So I have to go get my reference tables and use that little chart. So here's my chart, and I look up nichrome, and I can see the resistivity of nichrome is 150 times 10 to the negative 8 ohm meters. So I'm going to put that in here, and now let's put this all together and calculate the resistance. So I write the formula down. Resistance is resistivity times length divided by area. I write down the resistivity of nichrome that I got off the reference tables. There's the length is one meter, and there's the area, 
of the end of the wire that I figured out right here. And the answer is 10.2 ohms. And I get ohms because this meter times this meter cancels out meters squared. So all that's left is ohms.